Hi and welcome to this video where we'll be looking at adding aftertouch to your tracks and performances if your keyboard doesn't support it. This video may still be useful to you if you find aftertouch is poorly implemented or hard to control on your particular keyboard. Modex users and Roland System 8 owners know only too well that their synths don't transmit aftertouch. It's fair to say that the voices supplied with a Modex don't really respond to aftertouch, as many are optimised to take advantage of the super knob if external control is required. And the System 8 emulates instruments that predate MIDI itself. However, if you're using these in the studio to control various soft synths, then the lack of aftertouch can be a definite disadvantage. This seems to me to be a bit of a false economy, as inexpensive keyboards such as the Arturia Keystep include aftertouch in their specifications. But it's also a true thing to say that it can be a rare thing to find a keyboard with well-implemented aftertouch, as there's often a fine line between a setting that's oversensitive or one that requires a very heavy touch on the keyboard to trigger. So with all that in mind, let's look at a few methods which you can use to add aftertouch to your setup, and the method that I choose to use in conjunction with my Modi X. Perhaps the most obvious thing you could try is to use a keyboard such as the Keystep I mentioned before, or perhaps if you have one of the later Novation launch pads, checking to see if they support aftertouch. My Launchpad X supports polyphonic aftertouch, and that's probably a good time to have a look at how aftertouch is implemented and some of the terminology involved. You may well see aftertouch referred to as channel pressure. Generally, when manufacturers use the word aftertouch without qualification, they mean channel aftertouch. When holding down sustained keys, further pressure on the keys will trigger aftertouch, which applies to all voices equally. Of course, the result of this depends on what the synth in question is set to control by aftertouch, and commonly this would be settings such as filter cutoff frequency, pitch or volume, etc. Polyphonic aftertouch is referred to in the MIDI standard as key pressure. Relatively few synths and controller keyboards implement polyphonic aftertouch as it requires a more expensive mechanism, but one recent notable exception is the ASM Hydrosynth. So apart from adding new hardware, what can we do to access aftertouch on soft synths if your keyboard doesn't support it? The first method would be to simply draw an aftertouch within your DAW. So let's have a look at a couple of examples in different DAWs. Here you'll see that I've selected the patch ARK Blue Star, that's by ArcSun, it's one of the factory presets in Hive 2. And if you look over here in the usage, you'll see that it says AT for aftertouch equals flutter. So we can introduce a flutter effect by gradually introducing aftertouch. So let's close that up now and have a look at the, um, at the editor. So you'll see I played in a simple chord. Make sure that aftertouch is selected here. You'll see that the velocity pitch bend, etc., is uh, is available. Make sure that aftertouch is selected, and simply draw in the um, a, a ramp in which you wish to introduce the aftertouch. So I'll select uh, the line tool and draw in a line going up, like so, and coming down again, like so. And when we play that back. There's the flutter effect that we've introduced by the aftertouch command. Let's try the same thing in Bitwig. So here we are in Hive with a very simple phrase recorded. So let's add some aftertouch to that. Make sure that uh, channel pressure is selected and it's selected for the channel that you're on, which is in my case is channel one and uh, by selecting a, a pen, we can simply draw in where we want the uh, to introduce the aftertouch. The second method of adding aftertouch would be to map a controller to aftertouch. This obviously has the advantage of applying real-time control and can therefore be much more expressive. However, this is not as straightforward as you might think. Aftertouch itself is not a controller and so does not have a CC number. In the MIDI specification, Channel pressure is a separate event in its own right, much like pitch bend. As a result, lots of CC mapping programs out there don't allow mapping to aftertouch. However, one that does is ModMate, which you can get from the Plugin Guru website as well as the Programmer's website, and I'll provide links in the description. So here's a patch that I've created in Hive called Absolute Lead, and you'll see that uh, 
Down here, pressure sensitivity is set to oscillator 1 vibrato, so it's set to trigger oscillator 1 vibrato. And I've loaded up an example of ModMate. So here's ModMate loaded up. You'll see that there are six sort of VU meters which show you uh, the pitch bend up, pitch bend down, controller 1, which is the mod wheel, uh, controller 2, which is a spare controller for me. So I'm going to use controller number 2 and map that to aftertouch. So what I'm going to do is there's CC number 2. I'm going to right click on that and it brings up a list of CCs. So if I wanted to map it to say controller 49, you'll see that it's done so. But in my case, I want to map it to channel pressure, which is shown in here as mono aftertouch. So I'll put a little box, a little ticks rather next to the box uh, to map CC number two to aftertouch. And now when I play the patch and I move up my controller number two, you'll see that I'm actually introducing the vibrato that I showed you earlier in that patch. So obviously using ModMate, you can map that to any controllers that you have. Now, in my experience, uh, using rotary controllers certainly works, but you have to remember, obviously, to touch, to turn it up and down at the same time. And you obviously need a free hand to do that. Same thing with a slider. You can move that a little bit easier, perhaps to full resolution and then back down again to take it down using a slider. If you're using both hands on the keyboard at the same time, then a controller like an expression pedal makes a lot of sense. This is the particular model that I've got. It's a Nectar expression pedal that has switchable polarity. Uh, they're just over £20 in the UK, and it works well with the Modi X. On the Modi X, you can also set up an expression pedal to control the super knob, so I tend to leave mine set up that way. The method I use for channel aftertouch is to use the Rolly Light Pad block. This allows a high degree of sensitivity, and as your finger leaves the pad, it returns to zero every time, unlike a controller pedal, which you must obviously move back down again. If you want to try this for yourselves, you'll need the Blocks Code app. And you can look at the post on the Rolly site for the script and the help I was given by the community in creating it. Links are again in the description. So let's have a look at polyphonic aftertouch, also known as key pressure. As this potentially has different values for each key depressed, this is even harder to implement without a dedicated keyboard. So let's take a look at drawing in some key pressure using Cubase and Bitwig. You'd be surprised how many plugins actually support polyphonic aftertouch. Now, obviously, uh, to a comprehensive list is outside the scope of this video, but basically try it in your soft synths and see if they support it. Certainly all the Yuhi models do, and so the example that I'm going to use for this is another example on Yuhi Hive 2. So here we are in Hive 2, and you'll see that I've created a patch called Tranquility, and I've set it to uh, Oscillator 1 and Oscillator 2 to respond to pressure, and they're going to go up in value. So let's uh, move out that out of the way now. Have a listen to the, uh, the chord. So let's imagine that I only want to affect uh, the value here of C3. Simply uh, go to the list and instead of selecting uh, aftertouch, you go to polypressure. Select the note itself, which in this case is the C3. And let's draw in a value, say, from bar 2 to bar 3. So I'll take the uh, ramp tool and I'll draw up from the beginning of bar 2 to 3 and then down again from 3 just before the end of bar five. So what I also like to do is check that the values, particularly when you're using pitch like this, you'll see that the highest value there was one, two, five. I was just a little bit sure, so I'll put that up to one, two, seven and do the same thing here. So uh, now we should get that full extent of the, uh, the pitch movement and we'll have a listen to that. Remember, we're only affecting the note of C3. So in Bitwig, it's a little bit different. If we select um, for regular aftertouch, make sure MIDI channel one pressure is selected or whatever MIDI channel you're particularly working on. But for individual notes, select the note itself and uh, you'll see as, as you do so, there's a little um, bar down here, mark pressure. Let's increase that value and you'll see that the value is, is uh, shown here and we can increase that. In fact, let's do it on the C3 again. And... Uh, C3 will increase that and we'll have it coming up here to here and we'll go from, uh, from, the, from zero and likewise here to here and 
and I'll take this value back down again because if, uh, I selected the wrong note. And now we'll have C3 will move up. So you can see we affected each note individually. And of course, depending on what you've assigned the pressure amount to, you can modify virtually any parameter within your synth that way. It's also worth noting that Tim Shoebridge offers his PPG software utility that triggers key pressure for held notes via key switches, velocity values or CC values. A link for that is also posted in the description. So all that remains is to ask you to please give a thumbs up if you found the video helpful at all, subscribe to be notified of future videos, and for now, thanks for watching.